Hello, everyone, and welcome to the 20th Surface Ventures webinar. Very, uh, very pleased to uh, have you all here. Uh, before we go any further, can I please ask that uh, you could write where you're joining from today in the chat box? It'd be great to uh, great to see where you're all from and just to check that you're all hearing me okay. Uh, just to introduce myself, uh, my name is Sam McMaster. I'm the event manager here at Surface Ventures, and I'll be your host today. Surface Ventures is a not-for-profit organization, and our mission is to provide world-class surface engineering education for academia and industry. Every month, we bring you a sector-leading speaker to present the current challenges and future trends in surface engineering, alongside surface engineering workshops with some live equipment demonstrations. All right, great. Thanks. Thanks a lot, everyone. Looks like uh, looks like everything's working. We've got people from all over the world. We've got Mexico, Poland, India. Fantastic. Great to see you all. Okay. So today uh, it's my pleasure uh, to introduce uh, one moment. So, Dr. Philip Grutzmacher uh, from the Institute of Engineering Design and Development in TU Vienna. Uh, Philip uh, joined the Travology Research Division at TU Vienna as a postdoctoral researcher, excuse me, in 2019, um, and he uh, obtained his PhD in material science from Saarland University. His research interests focus on the tribological mechanisms of 2D materials, the microstructural evolution of metals during sliding, as well as surface engineering. He has authored more than 35 papers in highly ranked peer-reviewed journals. And in 2021, he joined the Early Career Editorial Board of Tribology Letters. In terms of agenda, we'll start with our speaker's presentation and then have a presentation also from Gregor Patzer of Optimal Instruments. So if I could at this moment, please ask uh, both of our speakers to come on stage just so they can say hello. Welcome, Gregor. Hello, thank you. Very welcome. Looking forward to seeing you later and very excited to see the presentation. <laughs> and welcome, Philip. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm excited to give this presentation today. Okay, great. Uh, so uh, we'll be hearing from Gregor. Um, and after both presentations, uh, we will have a Q&A session uh, towards the end of the event. A quick note on questions, uh, please type these into the chat. I will mark them um, for answering during the Q&A session. And we're planning to have an event that will run for around 60 minutes today. Uh, there will also be some poll questions that will be released, as well as some handouts and application notes from Optimal Instruments. Um, and if you um, said yes to be contacted later, if you downloaded some of these, someone from Optimal Instruments may be in touch. Uh, I'd like to give you a, a quick reminder about our website, surfaceventures.org. Uh, we have our videos from all of our previous talks, information regarding upcoming webinars, and more information about our team. So we'd like to learn a little bit more about you as our, as our audience. Uh, so I'm going to start with a quick poll question. Just ask, what is your current role? Release that now. Okay, just uh, wait one moment for some answers to come in. Okay, so I think we'll uh, we'll get some answers from from the audience as they uh, as as they see that question. So we won't uh, we won't tarry any longer, and I'll I'll hand over uh, to you, Philip. So if you give me one moment, I'll. Uh, Bring up your slides. So there we go. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, Shall move stage now. So thank you. Looking forward to hearing this talk. Perfect. Sam, thank you very much for the very nice introduction. As indicated, my name is Philip Krutzmacher, and I'm a postdoc at the University of Technology in beautiful Vienna. I will talk today about a very interesting material called. Maxines, an image of which you can see here on the left. And uh, in particular, I will talk about why it can be a model material for solid lubricants, I should say, 
uh, solid lubricants based on 2D materials. Um, in case yeah, people today which are not very familiar with solid lubricants, I will start off my talk with uh, why we even need solid lubricants. Then I will tell you what are maxines, how they are made, and about their properties, and especially in terms of mechanical and tribological properties, uh, which I am most interested in. Um, yeah, so let's start off why we even need solid lubricants. Typically, lubricants in general are used everywhere where we have surfaces in inter um, interacting surfaces in relative motion. And these often or typically liquid lubricants are used in uh, applications like bearings, um, pistons, and so on. And then they reduce friction, provide cooling, and prevent damage and corrosion in machines like watches, engines, and uh, even wind turbines. But there are certain problems associated with lubricants which are that they are usually based on crude oil and are therefore a non-sustainable form of lubrication. The envi environmental issues related especially to their disposal because they might contain toxic additives. Um, they only work in a, they only can be used in confined systems and they have limitations regarding the temperature range and atmospheric pressure range. So for applications where we have extreme environments and especially in terms of temperature and, and, by, and atmospheric pressure, the attention of the um, scientific community turns more and more to solid lubricants. There are several classes of solid lubricants of materials which can be used for solid lubricity, which are uh, soft metals like gold or copper, polymers like PTFE, hard carbon-based materials, which can be diamond-like carbon coatings, and most importantly for today's talk, 2D materials. What are 2D materials? 2D materials are um, sheet-like structures with one or several um, sheets stacked over each other. And these sheets contain, again, one or a few of atomic layers. And these um, the single sheets, they have strong in-plane bonds, but are only bonded by weak uh, van der Waals forces between the layers. Examples of these materials are graphene, uh, transition metal dichalcogenides like molybdenum disulfide or tungsten disulfide, uh, boron nitride, or uh, the material I will talk about today, maxines. Due to their structure, they have extraordinary physical properties, and they are mostly known for their um, particular electronic properties, but also they have outstanding mechanical properties and therefore also tribological properties. And these are um, yeah, the properties I'm most interested in and I will talk about today. Um, due to their structure having these strong in-plane bonds, but only weak out-of-plane bonds, these sheets, these beautiful sheets you can see here on the left, can slide over each other pretty easily, like uh, a deck of cards. And this easy to shear ability makes them particularly um, apply applicable for solid lubrication purposes. And for these, um, for, for these properties, they have been used for quite a long time, for example, in brass instruments, in metal forming processes, in the food industry, in nano electronic mechanical systems where we need a small scale lubricant, and of course also in space applications. A very recent and prominent example here in space applications is the recently launched uh, James Webb Space Telescope, where basically all moving systems are lubricated by molybdenum disulfide or a composite containing this material. And in all of these um, applications, we have the limitations for lubri liquid lubricants I was talking about before. So we have, for example, very high temperatures, or we have containment issues, or we have low atmospheric pressures like in space applications. 
and therefore we need solid lubricants. However, the fundamental mechanical and tribological properties of these 2D materials are often not very well understood or still not very well understood, even though they have been used for quite a while. And here, maxines come into play. What are maxines? Maxines are 2D transition metal carbides, carbonitrides, and nitrides. They have the general formula you can see um, in the top of M, N plus 1, X, N, T, X. And the M represents, which you can see in the periodic table, the a trans uh, transition metal, which can be titanium, can be vanadium, can be chromium, molybdenum, and so on. The X element can be either carbon or nitrogen, here in gray, and the T stands for surface terminations, which you can see here in yellow. Mm. They are called maxines because they are typically derived from max phase precursors, where you have also the transition metal M element and the X, and additionally you have an A element. These max phases are ternary layered uh, carbides or nitrides, and the additional A element is from group 13 to 16, where mostly aluminum is used. This ending in you have in maxine then demonstrates the similarity to graphene. In order to get from max phases to maxines, we somehow have to uh, separate this, the single layers to get from such a structure you see here in the top to a layer 2D material you see in the bottom. Often for 2D materials, mechanical exfoliation techniques are used to create 2D materials. And uh, this method, the scotch, ma uh, scotch tape method, has also been used in 2004 to create the first monolayers of graphene. And here you actually only really need a very simple technique. So you use scotch tape and you have the bulk crystal, for example, graphite. You uh, put the scotch tape on the bulk material on graphite and peel off single layers of this material. And then you transfer it to another substrate and you might end up with monolayers, so a real 2D material. However, in case of maxines, the bondings here shown is a titanium 3 carbon 2 maxine. The MA bonding, so the bonding between titanium and aluminum, is too strong to separate the, the, the layers, the titanium carbide layers, which then make the maxines by these mechanical processes. But the MA bonds between, for example, titanium and aluminum are much weaker than the uh, bonding between titanium and carbon. And therefore, we can use a chemical process to etch away um, the aluminum and therefore get uh, maxine, a process which is called selective etching. Often here, we are um, using uh, the maxine in a hydrofluoric acid uh, solution. And I want to show you a small video how this uh, process is working. The max phases are mixed with the hydrofluoric acid and due to the weaker bonds between titanium and aluminum, the HFO bonds between titanium and aluminum etches away the aluminum, aluminum and then the link bonds are saturated with surface terminations and the two layers are separated, therefore creating such a layered structures as we see in maxines. If you use HF, the surface terminations, which then saturate the surface of the single maxine layers, will always have a mixture of uh, OH, O, and F. But depending on the synthesis route, so you can also use molten salts, for example, you can also get even uniform surface terminations containing chlorine, bromine, and so on. 
also the um, yeah the, the relation between the O H O and F can also be tuned by changing the uh, parameters during the etching process. It is very important to note that these that this um, synthesis process of selective etching is uh, possible to be scaled. So actually, application relevant amounts of this material can be processed. In, uh, in contrast to, for example, mechanical exfoliation, where you only can uh, produce very very small amounts of material. After this synthesis method of selective etching, you get a multi-layer stack of material, which is basically like graphite. And with further further exfoliation, um, you can then delaminate these stacks and have mono or few layer magazines, so to speak, a real 2D material. To summarize, we have uh, a huge variety of magazines where we can change the chemical composition, so we can change the transition metal, we can have titanium magazines, vanadium magazines, chromium magazines, molybdenum magazines, and so on. Uh, we can also change um, the X element being carbon or nitrogen, also having a mixture between carbon and nitrogen. We can also uh, vary the layer thickness from M to X, which might be, for example, titanium 2 uh, carbon or M3 X2, titanium 3 carbon 2, which is the most uh, used maxine and so on. So we can go from three to five to seven to nine atomic layer of thickness. And this, for example, will have a huge impact on the mechanical properties of these vaccines. For example, the, yeah, the bending modulus uh, will get much higher if you increase the thickness of vaccines. Then you cannot only use monoatomic atomic, um, elements of mixines, but you can also have solid solutions of mixines. So you can mix two different transition metals. And recently it was shown that you can even create high entropy multi-elemental mixines. These solid solutions can not only have a random orientation of the elements, but you can also have ordered mixines, ordered solid solutions, where you, have where you can, for example, have uh, two layers of titanium, with a molybdenum layer inside. And if you then, um, if you then also uh, take the possibility to change the surface terminations, uh, which I've shown before, the possibilities to yeah, have different vaccines and therefore to tune their properties is nearly endless. And, and this also obviously um, will be uh, relevant for the mechanical and tribological properties um, and will be will, will facilitate us to understand certain properties of 2D materials in general on um, yeah on their tribological properties. Here I um, yeah I have a figure of the influence of chemical composition in terms of the transition metal and also the X element being carbon or nitrogen on the bond stiffness, 2D stiffness and elastic modulus from a very nice review from Wyatt et al. And you can, I don't want to go into much detail here, but you can see in the top, for example, that the um, chemical composition in terms of transition metal has a big, big influence on 2D stiffness and uh, on bond stiffness and that the layer thickness, what I've said before, has also a, uh, quite, in, quite a big influence on the elastic modulus. Also on the, in the bottom layer, you see that also the surface terminations have a big impact on the, on the mechanical properties. And this was also um, verified in some experimental studies, even though there are very little of these experimental studies researchers by, of the University of Nebraska, they have done um, some mechanical um, nano indentation experiments with titanium carbide and the iodium carbide vaccines, where they deposited monolayers of these vaccines on a silicon grid having dimples, and then they pushed with an AFM tip on these monosheets and measured their mechanical properties. 
And what they found is that uh, first the chemical composition and the layer thickness, so the niobium carbide having seven layers and the titanium carbide having five layers already influences the mechanical properties in terms of young modulus. Also, the, both of these vaccines had very high breaking strength. And if the AFM tip punctured the vaccine layer, as you see here on the left uh, bottom, you see that the, uh, there's no catastrophic failure, but only a small hole punctured in, these, um, in this vaccine layer, in this mono layer. This would be very different for graphene, where you would have then catastrophic failure of the, of the graphene sheet. If you compare the mechanical properties in terms of young modulus with other 2D materials, you see that there are basically two materials, graphene and boron nitride, which have much higher Young's modulus. But it has to be said that this is also for perfect crystalline monolayers, which are produced by mechanical exfoliation. And these, uh, as I said before, these processes are not able to be scaled up and are therefore not really application relevant. And if you compare to other 2D materials, which are solution process as the maxines, like graphene oxide, for example, the maxine showed the highest Young's modulus of these materials. And yeah, these mechanical properties in terms of, for example, Young's modulus and mechanical uh, and breaking strength they for sure will also have a huge impact on the tribological properties. For example, higher mechanical strength might relate in slower degradation of the 2D materials and therefore a longer wear life. It was also shown that the adhesion properties can be tuned by changing the vaccines also for titanium carbide in AFM experiments where the layer thickness was changed from titanium two carbon to titanium three carbon two. And this adhesion might of course have a big influence of on uh, tribal layer formation. If we have higher adhesion to the substrate or the counter body, we have, might have better tribal film formation and therefore a longer wear life and, and uh, lower, better wear resistance. Let me come to the studies involving friction of the vaccines. Uh, early theoretical studies of vaccines with DFT showed that the sliding energy barrier for vaccines is very low, uh, only slightly higher than that of graphene. And uh, later molecular dynamics studies of vaccines, uh, which you see here in the bottom, uh, except again, um, showed the influence of uh, layer thickness or chemical composition. On the left, you see here that from going from three to five to seven layers of the titanium carbon carbide, uh, maxine uh, friction is substantially changed. And also changing the surface terminations, which you see here on the right, has a big effect on friction. And especially these surface terminations were shown to show low friction which contain hydrogen atoms. This was traced back to the repulsive van der Waals forces between the hydrogen, hydrogen atoms at opposing layers. This influence of, um, of surface terminations was also recently uh, verified in an experimental study where the researchers showed um, with AFM that annealing the maxine flakes and therefore reducing the hydroxyl groups, OH groups on the surface reduces friction. So the properties can really be, be tuned by changing the surface ter terminations and then especially in nanotribological studies, these surface terminations govern the frictional behavior of vaccines. The theoretical studies showing that uh, low friction between two the layers of maxines is possible, indeed then show that we can use it as a solid lubricant and as such it can be basically used in all kinds of applications. We can use it as a lubricant additive, we can apply it as solid lubricant coatings, or we can use it as reinforcement phase in uh, composites. And all of these applications have already been shown, whereas the most promising so far 
I would say is the application of solid lubricant coatings. And here I want to show you also some studies later on. Um, due to the hydrophilic nature, maxines can be very easily uh, dissolved in, uh, in di several solutions. And as such, they can also be then applied easily as solid lubricant coatings. You can e use very easy processes as air spray, for example, or drop casting processes, or a little more uh, sophisticated methods as electrophoretic deposition, or also electrospraying, which then um, get yeah improve the layer quality. Also, an interesting method to produce these coatings might be blade coating, and you see in the bottom right that these blade coating process uh, results in very homogeneous coatings in terms of their thickness, and you get really very well aligned uh, Maxine flakes, which might then be very um, beneficial for their tribological properties. Let me show you some studies us and also other researchers did on the microscale tribological properties of Maxine's. In a recent study, we wanted to find out what the influence of the sheet number is of Maxine's on their tribological properties. So we used uh, both few layer Maxine's, titanium carbide Maxine's and multi-layer titanium carbide Maxine's. And we used a very easy deposition technique, uh, air spraying, and deposited these coatings on stainless steel surfaces. We then did tribological experiments in linear reciprocating sliding in normal atmosphere uh, with a uh, stainless steel counterbody. And on the right, you see the coefficient of friction over time in top for the few layer maxines and in the bottom for the multi layer maxines. Especially for the multi-layer mixines, we indeed see quite an interesting reduction in friction with a low and stable uh, ev frictional evolution. The few layer mixines, however, did not work so well, which can be traced back to the deg fast degradation of these few layer mixines and therefore going towards the reference value, which is here shown in black. In another study, we used electrospraying to improve the coating quality. As I said, electrospraying can produce very homogeneous coatings and uh, therefore might be able to improve the tribological properties. In these uh, studies, we also measured the long term tribological performance. Again, under, um, in linear reciprocating sliding in normal atmosphere. We used a steel substrate, which was coated with the titanium carbide maxines and uh, a silicon nitride counterbody. Here we used again multi-layer maxines, where you can see the very uh, beautiful layers with um, a thickness of roughly one nanometer in the bottom right. Let me come to the results of this study. We see that indeed we have a substantial decrease in friction compared to the uncoated reference surface with a coefficient of friction of roughly 0 0.01, uh, uh, 0 0.1, sorry. <laughs> and, um, and in particular, what is even more relevant that this reduction in friction was still valid after 100,000 sliding cycles, which um, means more or less um, one day of continuous tribological loading. Of course, we wanted to know what is going on in the contact zone. So we looked at the uh, surfaces of the, of the samples after the tests. And here on the left, you see the reference ball and substrate surface. And on the right, the, the surfaces when coated with maxines. We see that we have a substantial decrease in abrasive wear and also um, these reddish particles you can see on the reference ball surface are probably uh, related to oxidic wear particles, whereas this black transfer layer on the right for the coat, Maxine coated surface can be related to a um, transfer of the tribal film to the counterbody surface. Additionally, you see in the bottom that the microstructural changes 
underneath the substrate wear track are greatly reduced for the coated surface. And therefore we can say that, the, that there's much less energy dissipated for these micro, microstructural changes. We also did high resolution characterization and we saw that uh, this tribal film on the coated um, surface mainly consists of maxine nanosheets and amorphous and nanocrystalline iron oxides. These maxine nanosheets were, were mainly uh, found in, in the material pileups on the side of the wear track. And what is interesting to note is that these uh, original multi-layer particles were severely degraded. You see in the uh, bottom right that there are only a few layers of maxine nanosheets still, still present. This tells us two things. First, that even a few sheets of maxine nanosheets are still able to significantly reduce friction and still maintain this low coefficient of friction. And second, the, that the few layer maxines I showed you in the study before did not work can probably be related to a severe degradation of these maxine nanosheets. And if you start with only few layer maxines, this degra degradation is so fast that they cannot tribologically work uh, well anymore. We then came up with a mechanism for this friction reduction. And um, this is as, as follows. If we start the tribological experiment, we have a very fast formation of a tribal film. And this uh, tribal film is then also transferred to the counter body, thus uh, transforming the initial contact of steel to silicon nitride to a tribal film, tribal film contact, and the maxines providing easy to shear ability and therefore low friction. During the experiments, the maxines uh, by the oscillating motion of the counterbody are pushed out of the contact, building maxine reservoirs on the side and the end of the wear track. And they can then, if needed, uh, replenish the, the contact zone with fresh maxines and therefore um, help to keep friction low. If we compare the, yeah, the, tribological performance in terms of coefficient of friction and wear life with other 2D materials or yeah, solid lubricants based on 2D materials, we see that actually friction of the maxines is nothing special and especially hybrid materials, for example, containing of graphene and molybdenum disulfide can have much, much lower friction. But the problem is that they uh, quickly wear off whereas the maxines outperform all of these state-of-the-art 2D solid lubricant coatings in terms of the normalized wear, wear life. Normalized by the normal pressure and also the thickness. Normalizing by the thickness is important because there are studies which use maybe only mono layers of maxines, of, of solid lubricants and other studies which use very thick coatings. If you then uh, optimize the atmosphere or the experimental conditions in which you uh, use the, the maxines as solid lubricants, you can also see very low friction as shown by a study of uh, the group of Vadi Mochalin. They used a nitrogen atmosphere and a diamond like carbon coated ball. And they also used the titanium carbide maxines and they indeed observed super lubricity, very, very low friction with a coefficient of friction below uh, 0 0.01. If they, uh, this even outperformed graphene, having graphene didn't show super lubricity, but the titanium carbon carbide maxines did. If they then also build a hybrid material of the titanium carbide maxine and the graphene, they even reduce friction further and also showed um, yeah, higher higher wear life um, without any substantial increase in friction. Maxines can not only be used in laboratory environment, but as shown by a good friend of mine who is also in the audience today, hello Max, 
um, they can also be used already in or have been shown to have beneficial properties in real applications, uh, for example, thrust ball bearings. And as these experiments will run under normal atmosphere, as also the uh, experiments of our group I showed you before, they basically showed similar properties in terms of uh, where they had very interesting properties. Um, so, greatly improving the surface uh, service life of these bearings and also outperforming other solid lubricant coatings in this respect. For example, also molybdenum disulfide coated bearings. In terms of friction, as you see in these uh, bar diagrams, they are not, they weren't really interesting. Decreasing friction in, in, uh, in comparison with the uncoated reference, but not um, in comparison with other other solid lubricants, if we then go to the to to the to the very other end of the scale to nanoscale experiments, titanium carbide uh, maxines have also shown very interesting properties. For example, they have shown a substantial decrease of friction when compared to silicon oxide in in these friction maps you see here on the left. And what is even more interesting, in contrast to other 2D materials, which usually show a layered dependent lubricity, this cannot be found for maxines, for also titanium carbide maxines, which you see here on the right. So it doesn't matter if you uh, rub with an AFM tip over one, two, three, or four layers of maxines, friction will always be uh, the same. So this tells us that even one of these layers of Maxines has good uh, tribological properties and provides lubricity, which also might be interesting for micro scale or macro scale experiments where you, and this basically also confirms what I showed you before, that even though Maxines strongly degrade, they might even still be able to generate lubricity, maintaining low friction. What I want you to take uh, home from this talk is that despite very little um, experiments on the tribology of maxines, they already have demonstrated uh, outstanding wear resistance, outperforming other 2D solid lubricants in this respect. Also, um, super lubric behavior is possible with maxines giving the right surface or operation conditions, such as nitrogen atmosphere. And most importantly, um, as the most importantly, don't forget that uh, all of these studies I showed you were on titanium carbide maxines. And as uh, Professor Gogozzi, one of the co-inventors of maxines, likes to say, they come in many colors, in many flavors, and in many kinds. So maxines have a very large structural and chemical diversity which enables us to tune their interlayer and interface design and therefore their properties. Up to date, they have been shown that there are more or less 30 different maxines uh, with different chemical compositions, but theoretical much more are predicted. And so uh, we have a huge, we have a huge um, chemical diversity and more and more of these maxines can be tested for tribological properties. And as the chemical composition, as I showed you, changes the mechanical properties, this for sure will also have an influence on tribology. Additionally, new synthesis routes are developed and uh, this enables the design of surface terminations, maybe even uh, uniform surface terminations. And as I've shown you in the, in the talk, the surface terminations have a strong impact on the interlayer couplings, so on the forces between two edges and layers, and therefore also on the sliding properties and friction. A proper or a topic I haven't even touched in my talk today is the functionalization of Maxine sheets, where you can intercalate or bond uh, different molecules or ions or species to the Maxine sheets, which might again change their uh, interlayer bonding or interlayer interactions and therefore friction, or it might also, for example, um, change the dispersibility of the maxines and therefore improve their, um, their performance when used as lubricant additives. 
And with that, I want to wrap up my talk and uh, let you know that Maxine tribology is still a young field, but a fast growing field with new and more and more studies popping up every day or every week. And uh, I think it is a very interesting material based on 2D materials, and it can yeah, pave the way for understanding a lot of interactions or properties of chemical composition, atomic layer number, and surface terminations, which might be beneficial to the whole field of 2D material tribology. And with that, I want to thank you for your attention, and I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. Okay. Thank, thank you very much, Philip. That was uh, that was fascinating. Uh, for now, what we will do is um, is um, swap over to. I don't hear you, Sam. Can you can you hear me now? Apologies. Can I can I just check in the chat? Can everyone can everyone hear me? Okay. Excellent. Excellent um right so philip can you can you hear me right. um okay a small small audio glitch everyone apologies um philip if you could um if you could um reload your web browser please can you um... Sorry, everyone. Um, so for now, what we will do is uh, to ask um, Gregor to uh, to come on stage, and we and we'll be having um, a video and presentation from Optimal Instruments. So just uh, there you go. Welcome, welcome back, Gregor. Let me just check that uh, Philip's audio is okay before we proceed. Can you hear me okay? Yes, I hear you. Okay, excellent, <clears throat> excellent. Sorry, uh, apologies for the audio glitch, everyone. Um, so, uh, sorry, Philip. For now, what we'll do is we'll uh, move over to Gregor, who will be showing a uh, we have a video and a presentation from him, and then we will address any questions on your talk and also on on anything that uh, that uh, Gregor speaks on in this next section. So. Um, for right now. Um, Gregor, would you like to start with the video and then I'll bring up your slides? Yes, please. And I'm so uh, happy okay. and um, yeah, interestingly, uh, this topic was very great and very impressive. Thank you, Dr. Uh, Grützmacher for this. And um, those results would have also been able to be produced on one of our tribometers. And this is very great and I could, uh, a good um, step over to our presentation. So um, Samuel, please, if you can start the video and then I will uh, present my slides. We'll do. Let's start that now. Thank you very much. And I think we were uh, already able to demonstrate the fields of applications where we are active. <clears throat> and as I already mentioned before, or um, yeah, tried to mention before, um, our topic is tribo testing, friction and wear testing. I saw also in the polls that um, many of you are from mechanical engineering and are doing or um, yeah, are producing the results on model tribometers and mechanical test tricks, more than 19% of the, 
all in all. And um, that's the perfect interface to my slides because we are the specialists in uh, mechanical simulating of tribological problems <clears throat> at Optimal. Um, if you can go to the next slide or can I move by myself? Ah, I can move, sorry. Um, yes, Optimal yes. Instruments has more than 50 years of uh, history with our products for measuring friction and wear. We are placed in Munich, Germany. Fortunately, the Oktoberfest will happen end of this year. So everybody is invited, of course, to visit us and to uh, have a look at our products <clears throat> in autumn, of course, earlier as well. But autumn is a good connection with Oktoberfest. Uh, <clears throat> we are a small and very international and interdisciplinary team. Our specialty is to take over customers problems as you can see this is how normally inquiries look like in our case totally uh, yeah customized um, sketches 3d uh, drawings uh, original parts and our strength is to find the right solution to test those uh, problems on a test bench on in the, in the lab scale so that you don't have to go on expensive test tricks or to field tests, you can already mechanically simulate the results within the lab. And this is what we make then out of those inquiries. We make um, great designs that fit into our uh, testing platforms, <clears throat> like um, into the SRV, which is the most um, which is the most frequently used test trick in the industry for mechanical tribo testing. Uh, it provides also many standard methods, especially for the lubricants, but also for materials and other components. And in the next slides, I'm going to show you some examples with focus on e-mobility, because this is, of course, one of the most important topics in the industry at the moment. <clears throat> And there, um, I'm a little bit weird, okay. And um, there we can fulfill many uh, testing demands on the one hand side from the lubricant side and on the other hand side from the uh, engineering side. Um, okay, this does not really work here, but it's not so important. Um, with regards to the lubricant side, we can, um, for example, test uh, uh, gear, um, gear lubricants <clears throat> with original clutch materials in uh, rotating systems <clears throat> to predict the frictional performance of those gear lubricants. The gear lubricants, transmission fluids, have the characteristics that they are not um, required to have low friction but very stable friction and this is what you can see in this example the speed for speed um, varies this is the purple step uh, step line here but the friction represented in um, light red remains stable and this is what we can test on our test trick and predict then the frictional performance over different sliding speeds for example another example is um, um, tests in uh, the SRV with the oscillatory movement, also clutch linings in coexistence with um, transmission fluids, where we can exactly um, measure the frictional response under varying sliding speeds. <clears throat> Another um, requirement for uh, fluids in the e-mobility is of course the friction performance and the wear protection and uh, this is what we can also do with our tribometers with online wear measurement in red you see represented the friction of two different oil samples and in gray and black you see the online wear measurement and what is interesting in this case the friction is very comparable between both, but the wear differs. And this is something what you can nicely then uh, uh, recognize in online measurements that you have a very good 
differentiation with regards to friction and where protecting performance. Another um, a require me, requirement is, of course, the durability and the anti-wear uh, properties. <clears throat> uh, on the one hand side, with regards to fretting wear, you know that fretting wear is a very hot topic moment at the moment in the um, uh, engineering world. Fretting wear occurs in e-mobiles, in uh, wind turbines, and also as a so-called false Brunelling effect, also in bearings during transportation. And this is what we can nicely test on our test strips um, with regards on the one hand side to the fluorescence and on the other hand side to the surface modifications. Uh, then when talking about the um, new requirements as, for example, heat, um, transfer and thermal conductivity. Um, there we are. Sorry, this, those animations are a little bit um, weird here uh, due to the transfer, but uh, don't mind. And um, one one interesting requirement is the material compatibility uh, in the e-mobility. For example, with um, between steel, elastomer and fluid, and this is what we can test also very nicely on our test tricks. As you can see here in this example, we compare the compatibility between a steel body, an elastomer counterpiece, <clears throat> and um, different fluids. And you can see here in the frictional response or also in the friction hysteresis loops um, that there is a nice differentiation and it is in very good correlation with the real behavior in the field. Um, yeah, this was material compatibility now. Now we are talking about the electrical properties of fluids. And <clears throat> this is also something that we can cover with our solutions with the electrical resistance measurement. So we can do the tribo test and measure the electrical resistance, which is principally the same as the conductivity, but only the recipro reciproke value. And um, there we can also, on the one hand side, nicely compare the electrical properties of lubricants. In the bearings, uh, lubricants have to be electrically conductive. So that means they have to uh, provide a low electrical resistance value which would be the lower example in this, in this case. And um, in other cases, lubricants have to provide high electrical resistance values where they have to isolate. And therefore, you can nicely differentiate. And you can also use this measurement technique to, um, to evaluate the performance of your coatings. If you have isolating coatings and they break through, and the substrate is a metal, um, a conductive metal, then you will immediately recognize when the coating breaks through that you have a shortcut and the electrical resistance breaks down to zero. When talking about components, um, we can also uh, do tests of many uh, component aspects like the friction and wear properties of gear components we produce a specimen from original gear materials with original surface topographies pro, um, and run our test method with uh, those samples. And then we can predict the in-field performance of those gear components. Another application would be the stator coil. This is also very interesting because it's multidisciplinary. On the one hand side, we have the uh, coated copper wires in the stator coil. On the other hand side, we have um, the gear fluid that is in contact with the copper wires. And this gear fluid at the same time has to work as a coolant for the stator. And uh, this makes it very interesting with regards to chemistry and comparability, compatibility between those 
uh, systems. And this is what we can nicely test within the SRV with our special setup for the hairpin wires. Talking about friction linings, I just mentioned before when, when I talked about um, transmission fluids. On the other hand side, if you keep the friction lining constant, then you can, of course, um, also evaluate the performance of friction linings or as well as um, the materials for brake pads, which is also a very interesting topic when talking about fine dust and um, the pollution of brake dust into the air. <clears throat> when talking about um, the brake system it's, it, uh, itself, oh, sorry, um, this, um, uh, I wanted to mention that in the brake system, we also have uh, hydraulic components. There we have material compatibility, acoustic emissions, stick slip effects that can be covered. And last but not least, a very interesting new topic is the heat transfer paste that cause wear during the application to the, to the accumulator, not during the uh, service in the car, but in the production process. They, those heat transfer pastes cause wear on the um, uh, nozzles that apply the paste to the uh, ac accumulator. And this is something which, which we can also test very nicely on our tribometers. With this, I'm concluding my short presentation. You have all our contact data and I see that many of you downloaded our brochures in the handout area. And um, so I wish you fun in reading those brochures. And of course, we will be very happy uh, to answer your questions bilaterally at um, my email address. You see it here, gregor.petzer at optimal-instruments.de. Thank you very much. And thank you, Dr. Grünsmacher, again, for your very interesting presentation. And Samuel Surface Ventures for hosting us today. <laughs> thank you. Thanks, Gregor. So we'll, um, we'll answer the questions that we, uh, we have now. I've just brought up a link um, to find out more about optimal instruments uh, friction tester. So please go ahead and, and click that if uh, this is of interest to you. So we've got, I believe, six questions. Uh, so we have one from Chandra here, um, one for you, uh, Philip, I believe. Uh, can we call max phase a 2D material? Um, maxes also have a layered structure. Um, is, my, is my audio fine? Yes, okay. I can hear you. Because I'm not using the headphones now, so I was <laughs> I wasn't sure. Yeah. <laughs> uh, first of all, thank you, Krega, for the nice words. I'm glad you liked the 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 talk and the introduction of Maxines as a solid lubricant material. Regarding the question as a 2D material of um, of Max phase, Max phases are not a 2D material. As I as I told you, the it has a layered structure, and this is basically the building block for Maxines. But the bonding between um, the, for example, aluminum, so the A element layer, and the uh, transition metal, for example, titanium, is a strong bonding. So you will always have um, a bulk material of Max phase, and you will not have these layers which can easily slide over each other. So no, it's not a 2D material. Um, as you have chemical bonding there, um, all of these yeah, properties you usually see in 2D materials you will not see for max phase. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> we have another question here um, from Mohammed, and we had uh, another question very similar to it. I think just to ask about um surface modifications of maxines um i believe by polymers or on polymers um could you tell us a little bit about that please um i think yeah so what um what muhammad there means is that um you can also i mean as i as i said in the uh, final slides of the of the talk you can intercalate the um, yeah, the Maxines, as you have this layered structure, then if you, yeah, then if you 
increase the distance between two layers, you can also intercalate certain molecules or ions. And these molecules mm -hmm. might also be of polymeric material. And um, if you have these small polymeric um, um, molecules in between the layers, if they are compatible with the Maxine sheets, you might also have a chemical reaction between the polymer molecule and the Maxine layer. So you can basically attach small mm -hmm. polymer molecules to the Maxine nanosheets and therefore have kind of a composite material between the Maxine nanosheets and the mm -hmm. polymer. This has several effects. It, for example, it will also prevent restacking. So by basically just by steric hindering, because you have these polymeric molecules on the Maxine surface, then two Maxine surfaces cannot go, come back into very close contact and form such a multi-layer stack. So they will basically uh, stay um, exfoliated. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. We've got a question from Peter here. Uh, if the intended tribological application for titanium carbide enriched monolayers is solid lubrication, what is the ideal surface roughness, uh, you know, RA as an example, would be required for useful operational life? Yeah, that's a very interesting question. And um, I mean, we know that the optimal surface roughness depends on, in general, the size of the solid lubricant particle. And Maxines, depending on the quality, they can have a lateral dimensions of, let's say, a few hundred nanometers or maybe even less, up to 10 or 20 micrometers even. So, I mean, the this difference is huge. There is so far not a tribological study about this, but of course, when you change the flake size going from nanometer size to tens of micrometers, then also the optimal surface roughness um, will be different. If you think about, for example, very small um, Maxine particles with a large surface roughness, then they can basically yeah, fall into the surface parities and not be able to come to the contact surface anymore. And there, um, I would say that bigger Maxine particles um, are better. So I think mm -hmm. in general that um, yeah, having a pretty smooth surface might be good in particular, in particular for small Maxine particles to have a yeah, good surface life. Mm -hmm. Thanks. We have a question here on what about high temperature applications for Maxines? Um, so far, there is not, um, there's no study about high temperature uh, applications in terms of tribological properties of Maxines. But of course, as they are um, bonding wise between the yeah, M and X element, they're pretty stable. They might be okay. definitely interesting for um, for high temperature applications, um, and as thus, for example, also be used in metal processing applications. Usually, we see uh, oxidation of maxines starting from let's say 400, 450 degrees Celsius, and uh, up to these temperatures, they are pretty stable. So I would say that uh, at least up to these temperatures, you can, you should be able to safely use them as a solid lubricant. Okay, thanks. Uh, I've got another question here from Mohammed asking, can we use vaccines as a membrane to filter heavy metals from fuel and water? Um, I'm not an expert about this, but definitely a very, very big app field of application of uh, Maxines is as, um, as, um, as filters for water purification. So um, definitely this is uh, being used, but um, probably not as a filter, but rather in, um, in um, electrocatalytic processes. Okay. Thanks. I have a question here, I, I think, um, relating to Gregor's uh, presentation. However, I think he's had to uh, 
he said to, to leave the event, just asking what are the different part names present in electric vehicles, which have tribological importance? Uh, what are the methods involved to reduce friction, like DLC coatings? Um, that's a very, we could, we could talk about that for a very long time. But I mean, this is, I mean, uh, um, I mean, we can still talk about, you know, brake pads, of course, is, is, is hugely important. Um, uh, any of the, any bearings in there, um, drivetrain and powertrain um, is extremely important, of course. Um, there's a few other things to consider with that, as Gregor talked about, um, in terms of electrical conductivity of um, any lubricants present. Um, coatings are one method with this, uh, DLC coatings, um, various uh, other surface engineering methods, such as, you know, various hardening methods, nitriding um, or carburizing is also quite, um, uh, quite popular for automotive applications. So that's, I mean, if you have anything else to, to add, Philip, but I, I think that's, there's, there's a, we could go on and on about this. This could be its own, its own talk. So I don't want to, to, to go on too much. Uh, so I'll leave, leave that one there. Um, we have uh, two final questions here. Um, we have one here um, from uh, Nodura saying the potential of the material looks quite promising. Well, what's your take on graphite as a solid lubricant? A derivative of it, known as exfoliated graphite, can be cheap yet effective. We develop various grades of exfoliated graphite. And if you're interested, uh, we're very much open for collaboration. Yeah, thank you. Great question. I mean, I'm always also open for collaboration. So if you're interested, just uh, send me an email. About your question, I mean, of course, graphite is and, and graphene also, they're great solid lubricants. And uh, in, for a lot of applications, they might be better as mixines, especially regarding, regarding uh, friction reduction. What is great about mixines and uh, what I really try to emphasize here is that it's such a big field of uh, such a big family of 2D materials and that you can really learn a lot about um, yeah, what, what effect does it have changing the chemical composition? What effect does it have tuning the uh, surface terminations and therefore the interactions between several layers? What effect especially does it have when changing not set, having a different number of uh, sheets of a 2D material, but changing the layer thickness of one single monolayer of this 2D material. So I think from this, especially for mixines, we can we can learn a lot. And here's where mixines are really great, whereas as graphite, I mean, of course, you can have uh, graphene oxide, you can, you can have uh, different um, uh, graphites with different surface defects and so on, but simply the realm of changing its, um, its mechanical properties by changing chemical composition and so on is not so big as with mixines. But in general, of course, graphite uh, is also <laughs> a great solid lubricant. Mm. Absolutely. And then a final question here from Nigo, uh, just asking how sensitive uh, are mixines in their tribological performance to humidity? Yeah, also great question. Thanks. We have definitely seen that um, that low humidity, so I've also shown you a nitrogen atmosphere where you basically have no humidity, tribological performance is good. Also in the lower range, let's say normal, yeah, normal atmosphere with 20 to 40 percent uh, humidity is, uh, we still see beneficial properties and good tribological performance. If you go to very high humidity, let's say 80% uh, of humidity, there's one study showing that then the tribological performance deteriorates, gets worse and doesn't, um, and the mixines don't really work anymore. And I think the authors postulate that if you have 
too much humidity and a lot of water molecules intercalating into the uh, Maxine nanosheets, then the interlayer distance is going is getting too big, and they're very easily shearing um, with respect to one another, and then you can very quickly remove all the material from the contact zone, and therefore, um, yeah, if the solid lubricant is not in the contact zone anymore, you will lose your beneficial geological uh, performance. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you very much for, for answering all of those those questions, Philip. And I think that's that's it for questions now. So with that, I'll uh, I'll bring this uh, bring this session to a close, um, and just say um, thank you very much um, for that great presentation. Um, very fascinating topic. So thank you. Um, to uh, talk a little bit about our uh, upcoming events. Um, so our next uh, workshop will be on the 12th of May at uh, 2 p.m. British Summer Time. Um, so uh, please um, go ahead and, and click uh, click on that if you're if you're interested on uh, roughness and surface texturing. So workshops will be a more interactive session, and we'll have um, an equipment demonstration as part of that. Um, we also have our next, the dates confirmed for our next upcoming um, webinars um, in partnership with Optimal Instruments, um, the 26th of May at 4 p.m. and the 30th of June at 12.30 p.m. So please uh, mark those in your calendar. They will be available on our website in due course. Um, so I'd also like to thank uh, Optimal Instruments uh, for the support for running today's session. We wouldn't be able to uh, to have um, our events without our great partners. So I'd like to uh, to thank them. Um, uh, once again, a reminder: please uh, visit our website uh, to take a look at replays of our previous events, as well as uh, notifications of upcoming events. Uh, we have our mailing list as well, um, which uh, uh, will keep you updated with uh, new, uh, new and upcoming events. And you can also receive our uh, fortnightly newsletter, Modern Surface, by signing up uh, to our mailing list. And lastly, I'd like to, say, uh, like to ask um, for your support as the audience to Tell your colleagues, tell your friends about these events if they are interested. And uh, that is all for me. So I'd like to say thank you very much all for joining today. And thank you again, Philip, for, uh, for a great talk. And I wish you all a very pleasant rest of your day. Same for me. Thank you very, thank much, you very much. And take care. Thanks. Goodbye, all. <laughs>